Hi, Bex here. Welcome to my channel. I am really looking forward to this video because it's just going to be chatty and gushy. I'm talking about all the things that I love in books. So Books and Lala did this video as well. And essentially you kind of just talk about tropes or character traits or settings that you really love reading about in books. So for example, if another booktuber was to describe a book and mention one of these things, they're kind of things that will immediately make me add that book to my TBR so that I can check it out myself. So I've got a long list of 20 books here. Just want to kind of run through them all with you. Hopefully you guys can feel free to leave me recommendations for any of these in the comments. Kicking off with something that if you follow me on Twitter, you are not going to be surprised at, but it is water-based mythology, quite specifically mermaids. I love this in books. Just to shout out a book that I haven't yet talked about on my channel, but I absolutely love, is The Deep by Rivers Solomon. This follows the water-breathing descendants of pregnant African slave women who were thrown overboard trade ships. This mythology imagines that the child in the womb learns to breathe underwater and this species evolves. The underwater setting is beautiful and this book is so good, I highly recommend. A middle grade series I love for mermaids is the Ingo series by Helen Dunmore. Also not to do with mermaids but kind of water-based mythology is The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stevata. I love that book, it's really slow and atmospheric and it's all about these horses that come out of the sea and this little village races these horses and it's super dangerous and perilous and it's just it's a breathtaking story. Secondly we kind of have anything Kafka related or from the Kafka-esque genre so I love Franz Kafka's works my favourites are Metamorphosis obviously and In the Penal Colony um, both really twisted stories that almost read like nightmares but are also full of social and political commentary so that's kind of what the Kafka-esque genre is like so examples of things that are Kafka-esque Kafka on the Shore by Murakami you know it's in the name but yeah not the whole book but definitely has really gruesome moments and also the story has elements which are just totally unbelievable it's almost like it pushes the realm of fantasy as well by calling these things true. Also another example again it's set underwater so it's a double love for me is The Man Who Lived in Inner Space. This is an old book I've really never heard anyone talk about it but I love it. Essentially you've got a man who works in a factory and there's a really serious accident and he ends up totally deformed and scarred and mutilated by it so due to that he kind of becomes an outcast and doesn't want to live on land anymore so he tries to find a way so that he can live underwater and coexist with you know fish and creatures of the sea instead of on land which has been absolutely ruined by pollution and global warming also 1984 by George Orwell definitely can fit into the Kafka-esque genre, it's nightmarish, you know, Big Brother is watching you, and again, lots of political and social commentary, which always goes along with this genre. So the next one I want to talk about is just more of a fun one, which is elemental powers. So obviously this happens in fantasy books, I really hope you can recommend some to me because I'm sure this happens a lot, but I just love people who have power over the earth, over trees, over the seas, just anything like that is just so dramatic and gives me such goosebumps. For example, we have Aelin from the Throne of Glass series. We have all of the powerful characters within the Young Elite series by Marie Lu. And also, I haven't read this yet, but Red Queen, Olivia really wants me to read it because I, she was saying the powers within it one of the coolest parts of the story so I really love that. Next is something again, <laughs> Twitter and Bookstagram will know this but I've been getting into dark academia and that genre within books. The most talked about one being you know The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I think dark academia can have so many branches and span so many different books but typically 
they are set in a university and are really dark, often deal with things like murder and literature or classical studies, lots of things. And The Secret History is a great example for that. Also, If We Were Villains, I've yet to read that too, but I really want to. Dark Academia, this culture has created so many interesting stories and I really want to do a video dedicated to this as well after I've read just a few more books so that I'm really in the know. Next, we've got an absolutely huge genre. Um, just lumping it into one. Within non-fiction, it's books about nursing, therapy, mental illness, psychology. So like I said, huge topic there. And again, I really wanna make a video um, more specifically on this. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you know that those things really interest me and are important topics to me. So just to quickly spout off some of my favourites. We have The Collected Schizophrenias by Esme Wujian Wang. This is in part autobiography, in part essays of her experience with schizoaffective disorder, which is so well written and super interesting. There's also The Language of Kindness, which again is a, a nurse talking about stories that she's had. Um, she's worked in so many different fields in nursing mostly children's nursing I believe but just she recounts stories and she recounts what it means for her to be a nurse and it's just it's a beautiful story and really was really inspiring and encouraging for me to read as a student nurse. Also In Therapy is written by a psychotherapist and she has lots of anecdotes about the clients she's seen that's really interesting and lastly Freudian Slips is kind of a book of lots of bite-sized different parts within psychology and different phenomena and things like that perfect for beginners or just someone who's really interested in it I highly recommend that but essentially any books in this genre are going to get like a four or five stars from me because it's fascinating and it's educational we love it next we kind of have any book thinking to or in reference to the Theban trilogy by Sophocles so that's Antigone, Oedipus the King and Oedipus at Colonus. I love this series, I studied it in school. My favourites are Antigone and Oedipus the King. So Oedipus the King is the really famous story of Oedipus who was prophesied to kill his dad and marry his mum, which ends up happening and it's almost become a trope which happens in a lot of books. Freud talks about it a lot in his theories of like development of the superego Again, that's kind of drawing in my love of these classical plays with my love for psychology. So that's a really fun blend. We see this story of Oedipus reflected in Kafka on the Shore by Murakami. And another example which I really want to get to is Hold Your Own. It's a poetry collection, I believe written from the perspective of Tiresias, who is a prophet in this, in this Theban trilogy. And he's, he's a blind prophet and he gives advice to the royals within the story but because often what he has to say is condemning and you know you need to change your ways you need to stop this he faces a lot of backlash obviously from the royal figures especially king creon they just don't want to know what he has to say but i just thought tiresias was one of the most interesting characters so the fact that there's a poetry collection on him just kind of blows my mind. Okay, another one. I love books that can sort me into a house or a faction, anything like that. You know, the, the classic, you could do a Buzzfeed quiz, like which house am I? I don't know why I love that. I guess I love like the sense of community, the sense of labeling myself in kind of just a ridiculous fun way. It's so entertaining. Um, as you know, classic examples are like Hogwarts houses, the factions in Divergent, the houses in Percy Jackson. I just love, I just love all of that. So next we've got kind of a character trope, which is the anti-hero figure, or I'm not sure what to call this, but like the chosen one villain. So, you know, they've kind of been foretold, but not to save the world or to defeat the villain but to ruin the world and become the villain. Those plots are just so interesting and I love that they often turn 
this classic the chosen one hero trope completely on its head my favorite example is again i keep talking about this trilogy but adelina from the young elite it's so fascinating to see her kind of go through this predicament of does she want to be a hero or actually has she been so wronged and hurt in her life that she's more filled with rage more filled with anger and is it better for her to actually kind of unleash that and get revenge also another book which i recently heard of from i can't remember her channel name i'll pop it there she recommended the ruin of kings which is one of those stories where this guy called kieran who's an orphan actually turns out that he's the person who was prophesied to become this villain and kind of destroy the land i believe it's about him kind of coming to terms with that identity and you know we don't know whether he's gonna become the villain or not i'm intrigued i really want to get to that Whew, okay we're about halfway through <laughs> oh i wrote such a long list okay next bit morbid but books about death now either in your face about death or a creative twist on death so for example the book thief has chapters written from the point of view of death and it being a world war ii story just provides such an interesting perspective and i don't know i just think that's that's fascinating and also i love um i am i am i am that's a book about this lady blesser who has had so many near-death experiences and she writes about them in such a poetic lyrical way i love that book I, I did i do okay another setting that i love is the arena setting or like an island setting so essentially very um enclosed the characters are trapped they can't leave the hunger games you know they are for example in the first one they are stuck in this forest setting and yet yeah, they can't get out they just have to fight to the death until it's done the maze runner all the characters just find themselves dumped in this field where the only way it seems that they can escape is by navigating through this maze which is full of um, creatures who are going to kill them there's also lord of the flies these boys crash land onto this island what happens when all of these um young teen boys are just left by themselves to survive and start a civilization without any outer help help from adults again and then there were none essentially these people are trapped inside a house and one by one they start um being killed off there's just such a significant trend of this setting um in books that are some of my favorite ever books so please you know if there's any more like that do recommend them to me next we have books that involve niche training so my favorite example of this being ender's game he is sent off into space with a crew ender is being trained to fight space battles and i just i am just so obsessed with that book and how him and the other characters learn to fight it's really interesting and i really can't do it justice by explaining but you know that's niche training right that is very niche i'm not interested in books where they just speed through the training process like no i want it i want it to be a key component also we have um some schooling in the middle grade series charlie bone so he has magical powers and there's kind of a school where he can go to learn more about his abilities um again hogwarts you know magical training we love that okay next up this is interesting this is something that if i hear a book involves i instantly want to read it but actually i've hardly read any that i have enjoyed which is books that involve twins <laughs> as an identical twin i just want to read about twins um but yeah i've not i've not liked a lot of them like fangirl and a lot of people love that book just wasn't for me i think the best story that I, I know that involves twins is the twelfth night shakespeare that play come on that's a clip that's clever they like you know do a swapsy woo i love that trickery you know what me and olivia, one time in primary school me and olivia did swap classes and you know that was a fun time that was a fun time okay, another one that i wasn't sure 
like what what to call it what it's called but it's characters leveling up their powers you know they're powerful but through a series of events they just become a hundred times more powerful and it kind of often happens when they're up against you know an enemy there's no chance that they're going to be able to defeat them but whoa suddenly they're more powerful and they stand a chance it's dramatic and cool so we've got again alien from the throne of glass series she pulls a lot of fast ones honestly and vin in the mistborn series yeah they're both just super powerful la ladies such cool parts in the book where they level up <laughs> and they just become even more badass and i love it okay next one kind of stories that involve like the mad scientist or biological experimentation um super eerie super creepy super interesting if it involves like gene manipulation um oh that's a wild ride so for example jurassic park by michael crichton that book is so good and it proper goes into you know the science and genomes and dna it gets me excited and obviously frankenstein again we got mad science in that in both those both those stories it goes wrong shock okay another setting which i can't believe it's taken me this long to get to but the circus setting hello the night circus by erin morgenstern is my favorite book no circus setting has topped that I'm skeptical that it ever will, but I'm going to try and try and find that book anyway. I just think acrobatics and Circus de Soleil and this close group of circus folk is ju it's just really interesting and just sets up a great story. Okay, quite a popular one next is The Unreliable Narrator. So you're being told a story, but for whatever reason, you can't be convinced that the facts you're hearing are correct you know perhaps the main character doesn't know what's going on you don't know what's going on it's exciting it's mysterious some of my faves um before i go to sleep by sj watson that is whew, that is a ride we have our main character who has really short-term amnesia so essentially every time she wakes up she has forgotten something like the last 20 years of her life. She thinks she's a 20 year old, but she's actually like a 40 year old. And so every time she goes to bed in the evening, she forgets whatever she's learned from the day. Um, and again, she wakes up, doesn't know who she is. And when I tell you that this book is a thriller, are we scared? You should be scared. That has a crazy ending. Ooh. Also, We Were Liars has a lot of unreliability in it. Love that book. And The Ocean at the End of the Lane. Because that's written from a child's perspective. And it kind of blends make-believe and actual facts. And just leaves you thinking, yeah, I don't actually know what actually happened. What is actually real. So that story is another one of my favourites. Okay, nearing through the end. Um, this might take some explanation, but essentially books which involve like a notebook or a journal in which the characters like pour all their findings and discoveries into. Um, I love this. Whenever I saw this in books or films, especially as a child, like I wanted to make one. I wanted to just fill a notebook with nonsense about anything and just feel like I was really clever. This really stems from the Spiderwick Chronicles, like I tried to make my own book of monsters. I think I got rid of it, which is such a shame, but we gave it a go. Another great example is Gansey from The Raven Cycle. So he's hunting down this long dead Welsh king and trying to discover the powers of um, electric currents on the ley lines around his town so again he has a notebook just filled with all of his discoveries and again Marco from the night circus he also does this as he learns the magic system he puts loads of runes and symbols in a notebook yeah I just think that's cool I don't know if you're feeling me and then kind of 
different to that, like it, it's similar, but it's different, is books about a book. So we've got a special book in a story. So for example, in The Starless Sea, another one of my favourite books, um, Zachary Stumbles On, an old book that recounts an event from his childhood in it. That mystery leads him on a journey and an adventure to discover um, more about this book and it takes him to magical places. And another great example is in Shadow of the Wind. There's this book which our main character finds in a library and it holds so many secrets and leads again, leads on this mystery adventure through Barcelona. Um, lots of people want to get their hands on this book. Lots of people would kill um, to get their hands on this book. So I just love I love that plot line. I just think it's really mysterious and it just leads you the whole the whole way throughout the story just wanting to know what is the significance of this book? What are the secrets? And then lastly, we have close-knit groups of characters. I love that. Whether it's strong friendships like in that of the Raven Boys or it's more like cults like you see in night film full of people who worship Cordova and his movies and meet up at night time um, to watch them or just any sort of like secret societies I love that so yeah whether it's friendships or something a bit darker I just think a close-knit group provides such an interesting group of characters to follow so There we have it. That was my super long list of things I love in books. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if we share any favourites, if you have any recommendations for me or anything you feel I missed out of this list. You know, things that you love in books that you think I should love in books. This was really fun to compile and kind of look at my favourite books and think, okay, are there any similarities and what do I read in a synopsis that makes me think I want to check this out so yeah I hope to see you soon have a nice day